Last time we displayed a model that gave us a, well, you know, it's not a perfect fit, but it certainly looks more reasonable. Um, we just kind of want to come back to this and make some concluding remarks, do a little bit better job with this, and emphasize some points. Uh, but remember, one of the things that we said the last time is that kind of a, kind of a key test on whether your model is a good model is whether it's actually going to be able to contain drums. So if we plot this object up, then the problem that we have is that, and we noted this the last time, is that you know the drums are about two feet on a side, so we can barely get you know maybe two, three drums in into this object. And um, so we're really going to have to add more corner coordinates in order to uh, improve the uh, solution that we that we get. We'll have to. We've also pointed out that we're going to have to manipulate these points manually because the inversion process really doesn't. Um, you know, it tends to actually increase the error rather than decrease it. So if you you make sure you know if you if you didn't see the last video, you may want to scan through that and just just see what happens when we actually do an inversion using these three points. Uh, the anomaly, the uh, agreement between the calculations and the observations actually deteriorates. So we're going to add some corner coordinates, and we've got a model here which has one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, seven corner coordinates to it, to it now, and <clears throat> it's lying along the the basalt bedrock alluvial interface. And so this object again is not a it's not a perfect fit, but it's certainly giving us a better idea. You know, maybe something that we could put um, a little bit more faith in. It's a more realistic distribution of the drums that that might be at the site. Uh, but we have to make the same check that we we did with all all of our other models, and and that that basic check is 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 this object large enough to actually contain drums? And uh, so we plot the object up to scale, and we can see that you know just looking at it here that uh, we've got two feet here. This is about one to one, uh, about one to one plot. So. It's a it, it gave it gives us a fairly good fit, not a perfect fit, but you know it's a it's a it's it's really it turns out to be difficult to to get a perfect fit. Uh, the um, uh, you know what we, what we see here is a single drum placed in this, so we can fit a drum in there, and we can fit more drums, and we can fit more drums in there, and so we find that we can get up to about uh, 12 drums and uh, I don't know what that's doing there. Probably some thought escaped me, but the point is that uh, we we can actually pack real size drums into this object and remember that this is this object actually gives us a fairly good uh, uh, fit. Again, you know, not, not perfect, but it does give us a, a fairly good fit to the main features, to the prominent feature in the anomaly that's left over. So this is kind of a key test here. Make sure that the object that you come up with uh, is one that can actually contain whole drums because there's no evidence that the drums have been ruptured. So they have to be intact. Now, just as kind of a concluding, couple concluding points here, we take a single drum and just put it down here at 30 feet. Now, you really aren't going to be able to see this. Now it did put produce a little bit of a little bit of a bump right in here. And we haven't talked about the scale of this anomaly. These anomalies are pretty pretty large. This is zero minus three hundred nanoteslas, zero, three hundred six uh, seven hundred three three hundred and fifty seven hundred nanoteslas. So, so these are big anomalies. But if we were to draw a regional through there, this might pop up uh, 5, 10, 15 nanoteslas. You know, maybe you could argue, maybe you could make an argument, but a lot of the a lot of the features that you see along this profile have uh, undulations that are uh, more significant than that. So, uh, 
A drum at 30 meters is not going to be detectable. I feel I'm not, that's no exaggeration. But if you move this drum up to 15, um, 15 feet, I think I'm maybe mixing meters and feet, but we're dealing in feet here. And so we're at 15 feet, we were at 30 feet. Um, you know, about 10 meters to, um, to about four or five meters. And we're definitely going to see this anomaly here. It stands up against the background by more than, eh, you know, about half this, let's say, uh, 150 nanoteslas or, or so. So this would be a nice anomaly that would pop out. And so we'll see drums at 15 feet, but we could have additional drums down here that are basically undetectable because they're further further away from uh, the surface and we have that uh, 1 over r cubed drop off for uh, the dipole field. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the important takeaways that we should have from this exercise here is uh, when you're dealing with magnetics it's a little bit more of a problem than it is with gravity because of the 1 over r cubed uh, drop off and realize you're usually, you may be doing this, you know, as part of a thesis or as, you know, some project for class. And of course it's important to accurately convey these kinds of non-uniqueness and discuss the limitations in your model, the fact that there could be more drums down here. Uh, we always have, we're always faced with this non-uniqueness idea, but from a business point of view as well, you, um, don't want to be selling a result as definitive when in fact it is not. So, uh, you know, def definitely make your client aware of the limitations in your model. You have to be realistic, you have to be upfront, and, um, you know, that's always kind of an important point regardless of what it is that you're doing. But uh, in geophysical applications, this is. Uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, a truth that carries over into these uh, kinds of efforts as well. So uh, accurately convey the limitations of your results. Uh, we could have additional drums down here, but we know this is an area that if we're going to ex excavate, we need to do this with uh, great caution. Most of the drums are probably located in here. There may be some additional ones, and we could actually run a, we could take a magnetometer down once we've ex excavated the area and um, get some kind of a feeling for uh, you know whether or not there are additional objects uh, down in, in this area. So uh, that pretty much concludes the model study effort and I hope uh, hope uh, that was you know kind of a beneficial perspective and exercise for you. We're pretty much at the end of our uh, uh, studies of uh, magnetic methods. So uh, uh, thanks for joining me and we'll uh, see you see you next time as we continue on with uh, other topics.